Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and in today's video we're going to look at this the Memorex C-Ray 2 Hmm, it is C-Ray because it, they actually at the back say, look C-I-R-E, C-Ray the mix of attitude, fashion and personal expression in music <laughs> yeah whatever right so basically this is a Memorex cassette from the 91-92 lineup that was for North America I mean let's be honest look at this wrapper I mean could this really have come from any other time than that um, I've never seen this before this was sent to me by Tony Cruz of CassetteComeback.com and uh, if you want to purchase one of these he's got them in stock but more sales later so yeah I like uh, I like getting stuff which I've never seen before that didn't come to us in Europe so yeah this is a very colorful way 90s wrapper like I say it's C-Ray I mean you know it obviously didn't take off this you know attitude and uh, fashion and personal expression and music stuff because this is the only year that this cassette was made which makes it quite rare you know full lifetime warranty so yeah there we go so let's open this up and have a look see inside uh, no delicates on this one even though it's the only one I've got because uh, I, I like Memorex and I'm going to record on this afterwards so yeah so bye bye wrapper there we go so double look uh, it's it's a good looking cassette that really isn't it I mean like I say couldn't be any more 90s if it tried um, it's like the the progression of the traditional clown cassette that Memorex was known for and they're just uh, keeping the feeling on so let's have a look at this so all right hubs you see three whole hubs would say to me SKC as would the shell however if we uh, oh that's that's all ah, right look it's got the uh, the I like these cases with the little guide there and the little stub there so it stops dead at a right angle and doesn't just flop around nice nice cases these but um, if we look at back it says made in the USA by Memtech so Again, this this could be. I have a feeling this is made in the USA, like late Max Seller made in England. And so far as the tape, well, Memorex won't have been manufacturing the tape at this point. In fact, I think at this point, Memorex were they part of Radio Shack? But um, the tape will probably have come from SKC because elsewhere in the European range at this time, all of their cassettes were made by SKC. So, you know, it goes to reason that this is SKC tape. In fact, let's have a look-see at the old tape. Oh yes, a lovely, very dark tape. Let's have a sniff. Nope, it doesn't smell of uh, any sort of chrome. So, you know, the, the three whole hubs are SKC normally as well. So yeah, I mean, you know, shipped in part format to America where it's put together or even just ship loose and it's put in a case and uh, and put together in America so they can say made in America but I still think this is an SKC tape uh, the smell of it says that this is going to be a ferrocobalt so this is probably going to be the SKC QX formulation which is absolutely fine because uh, it's a great formulation that so have a look so hmm so strange labels are very very I don't know if you can see the very small short labels so you're probably going to be wanting to stick them down down there so it doesn't want to cover the memorex up just stick it there so you too can have the attitude and fashion of this but um I've got to say it's a really nice cassette I mean memorex I think are one of the kings of what you can do with a slip sheet because this is this slip sheet makes it look really great this you know this is the kind of tape you know if I was making a tape for a lady when I was in my teens you know this is this type of tape maybe they would appreciate I know that sounds incredibly sexist but you know it, it is a nice looking cassette very very uh, striking actually uh, especially with the purple rollers there but yeah so uh, probably an SKC QX tape there's nothing else really of note on the J card like I say 
It's a Siri 2, that's that, and then there's blurb on the back. There was a Siri 1 as well, which was the obviously the Type 1 version of this, which would have been the spiritual successor to the DBS clown tape. But yeah, let's uh, let's go and fire up a deck. Let's have a record and let's see if it sounds any good. Okie dokie, we're going to use the CR7 today, so let's uh, whack the CRA in and uh, get it calibrated. Alright, I'm going to run this at round plus three peaking, which is where I like to have a type 2 uh, recorded at nowadays so I don't feel the need to record the mega hot anymore I'm learning more and more to appreciate the hiss of a cassette as being the hiss of a cassette simple as that and I've said it before I've said it again if I wanted something that had no hiss I'd listen to a CD uh, and that's why I don't use Dobby so let's get this recorded now and I'm going to use another track from Gunnar Olsen he's my well he's just brilliant check him out from the YouTube audio library and this track is called Plain Truth so let's have a listen to some Plain Truth Memorex sometimes are looked down upon and I've said this before in many videos I've done about Memorex mainly because of their early tapes with the disintegrating foam pads and sealed shells you know they, they didn't age well and people have taken that and applied it to all of the Memorex range afterwards but the stuff when they started outsourcing Especially stuff when they started outsourcing to the likes of SKC, etc. The good. That was a really good sounding cassette. I really enjoyed that because like I say, I'm pretty sure this is SKC QX tape in this. Because SKC only really made two types of Type 2 cassette. They made the QX, which is the Cobalt Dope Ferric. And they made the CD, which is Cobalt Dope Chrome. Both of which are superb. 
And like I say, this looks great and it sounded great. It's a great little cassette. The truth. The big green agenda at the moment, you know, everything is being taxed to hell in the sake of saving the environment, even though most things it's trying to save are just, you know, rubbish. They, they don't save the environment at all. So here's my little bit as I get on the soapbox. You want to save the environment? Go back to physical media. Go back to an item that can store the music successfully for decades. An item that when you're not using it doesn't require any power. An item that you don't need to throw away after a couple of years because a small component inside has been designed to fail on purpose so you have to throw the rest of it in the bin. Go back to physical media. Physical media doesn't need data centres with air conditioning and massive power requirements, powering loads of servers and storage arrays using memory and processors to make sure that you can stream properly. No, no, it doesn't need that at all when you're not using it. It uses equipment that if looked after, cleaned and maybe has some little bits of rubber put in every few years, can successfully operate for decades. You want to save the environment? Go back to physical media and turn your streaming off. You don't need your Wi-Fi hub on 24-7 to listen to a cassette. You don't need your broadband router on 24-7 to listen to a cassette. You don't need a data centre on 24-7 burning energy to listen to a cassette. And you don't need equipment that's designed to fail through constant updates in a couple of years and turn into landfill. Do a bit for the environment, not just cassettes, vinyl, CDs. It's all as good, but that's why they don't want us to use them anymore. That's why they've disappeared. You can't remotely kill this through an update, so we have to buy the same thing again and again. And let's think about it, that's how the modern world is. When was the last time you bought something for the first time? Something that wasn't a replacement for something you already had or an upgrade to it? Exactly. Technology's created nothing new. All it's created is convenience. Yes, streaming is more convenient than this, but it doesn't actually do anything this doesn't. But at what cost? Well, the cost of these actually, if you go to cassettecomeback.com, you can see they're very reasonably priced. Ooh, you see that, that was a nice seed, but yeah, go over and get some of these because this is a really good cassette. I really like this and I'm gonna put some great 90s tunes on it. It's just crying out for a bit of, uh, yeah, it's crying out for a bit of like Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and a bit of Shanice and that sort of stuff. I don't know why, you know, these have character, we know, which streaming doesn't. And the character of this cassette says it needs to be filled full of early 90s goodness because this is a really, really good sounding cassette that looks fantastic. And yeah, I wish I had more, but I'm in the UK. They never came here, so I'll never see another one of these. But hey-ho, that's the way it goes. So thanks again for watching. Sorry about the soapbox chirp there, but this world's really winding me up a bit at the moment, and it's so obvious to everybody, except those that can do something about it, because they don't want to. But anyhow, on that happy note, you take care, happy taping, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.